What if I told you this was all done without the use of mods in survival on the Hitchhiker's SMP? Uh, except for this one. This one's this one's in creative. And it is all thanks to the Sculptures book. Ba -ba -ba -bum. This book goes crazy. It lets you make fake blocks. It lets you make fake items. And it lets you make floating text. Not only that, there are plenty of other options that you can work with now that make using the sculptures book absolutely amazing. And it's all thanks to this guy right here, the love of your life, Curtis does a dig. So I've done a short tutorial on the sculptures book before, and I don't know if I should do a full tutorial today or if I should just go over the changelog for this version of the book. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to get into the new stuff. And then if you want to see what the old stuff was before, then you can go take a look at that video. Uh, the link will be in the description below. So I guess let's go ahead and go over some changes. So first and foremost, the misc page, the miscellaneous page was renamed to item display. And that's because all that was in here was item display stuff anyway. I've also made it where the glow effect now has the ability to change the background color of the text. Before there wouldn't be any sort of glow effect on text, there, there's no way to outline the box the same way we would with a normal entity. So for example, if I were to add in this block here and I were to go to glow, oh, whoops, I gotta turn it on as well. We see that there's that red outline around it and obviously I can change that to a different color, but doing that here in text, it wouldn't actually form that outline around the box. So what I've done is I've made it so that it changes the background color instead. And I've also done something else. If you hover over where it says glow, it says click here to be taken to a website to help calculate the glow value for the trigger. So let's go ahead and open that on up. And this is what we have here. Let's say I wanted to do, I don't know. Um, we'll do like this dark blue color. Um, and we're not going to give it any alpha alpha for those that don't know is transparency. So I'm going to copy this int value. And now if I go trigger sculptures, glow color set, and I paste that value in, it would help if I was in text mode. There you go. We can change the background color to not even be transparent. It's completely opaque now. And obviously we can change that if we wanted, like if we wanted it to be like a, a, almost halfway down in transparency, we can copy that instead. And now when we do the command, we paste in the new value and there we go. We have a little bit of transparency there. So we have a trigger command for that now. We also have a text opacity one that works on a value between zero and 255. So if I would go ahead and put in 150, we can see that now the text is a little transparent too. You can kind of see it. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's go to 50. You can see uh, it definitely becomes transparent at that point. If we bring it back up to 255, completely opaque. There's also a few new pages here. We have block toggles, block numerics, block specialty, and text display. Since we're already working with text, let's go ahead and open up the text display one. So in here we have the alignment mode and we have some properties. So let's say the text on this display was very long. If we went to the text display page and chose the alignment, we could actually change the alignment of the text. Now, speaking of this, if you wanted to, you could also do another trigger for the line width and we can actually change how long it is. Now at default, this value is 200, but you can reduce it as much as you want uh, up until zero. So if you really wanted to, you could set it to one and then you get a really tall text box. And there's no spaces. In all honesty, I am not sure what the values represent. It might be the pixels per character added up. So it's gonna vary from text to text how long it's actually going to be or like how many characters will fit in it. However, with this, you're gonna be able to do quite a bit with your text, I, I feel. 
There is also the ability to toggle if this text will appear over blocks by toggling see through. And if we were to walk back here, you can see that I can still see the text over there, which is pretty neat. That's basically like player names if they're not crouching and then we can toggle it again by clicking it once more. And we can also add a shadow to the text and toggle that back off. The shadow is always going to remain the same color. I could not find a way to actually change that, but maybe in the future they'll add that functionality. And as mentioned, there are a few other pages. We have block toggles, block numerics, and block specialty. Let's go ahead and handle those real quick. So in the previous version of the sculpture book, if we were to add in a fence post, it would only be this. There would be no way to get it to connect to any of the sides and it was literally just the wooden pole sticking out of the ground. What block toggles allows us to do is actually toggle specific block states to connect or adjust. So now I can make this fence post actually have a north or east side or I could make it all four if I wanted to. And it doesn't actually have to connect to anything. So if I were to add in just a whole new block display right here, it's not even gonna connect to this one over here. However, if I adjust this one over here, like so, now it looks like it's fully connected, even though they really aren't. Another cool thing is if I go to the copy and paste page and I go ahead and copy the block state, and let's go ahead and move all the way over here and we're gonna add in a spruce fence. If I go to copy and paste and I paste in that block state, we get the same one we copied over there. So let's go ahead and take off south and let's go ahead and copy it again. And let's paste it over here and south should disappear. There we go. So now we can copy block states between blocks and they don't even have to be the exact same block. They just have to have the same block state. We also have some other block toggles for specific things. For example, with furnaces, blast furnaces and smokers, we can toggle on and off the lit block state. And as you can see now, we got the, the fire in front of the furnace. For redstone components, we can toggle on the powered component. Oh, whoops, I forgot that the redstone torch is actually a lit state, not a powered state. So let's go ahead and remove that. And let's use the crafter instead. So if I go over and hit powered, ah, the crafter is triggered, not powered. If I were to put in a, a rail, if I were to put in a rail and, uh, and, and I, and I, and I toggled the powered, there we go, there we go. See, first try, first try. <laughs> it helps if you know what block state goes to what block. We can do stuff with bottles in a brewing stand, toggling those on and off. We can do the same with a chiseled bookshelves, toggling whether or not there are specific books inside the shelves. We can invert a daylight sensor. We can open up a fence gate. We can make grass snowy or not snowy. We can make a lantern hanging or not hanging. Uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It literally just adds a little bit of a chain above the model. We can switch out a piston for an extended variant and it just removes the head. We can toggle if a repeater is locked or not. We can change scaffolding to have the bottom or not. And for stuff like doors and tall grass, large ferns, tall sea grass, all the two block tall flowers, we can change which half is being rendered, whether it's the top or the bottom half. And for glow berries, we can toggle whether or not there are actually berries in there. Now, these are all block displays, so these aren't gonna work for the actual blocks. Like, I can't take a piston, for example, and actually place it somewhere and do this block toggle to remove the head of the piston, that's not going to work. But for the display entities themselves, we can toggle that on and off. So these toggles alone give us a ton to work with, but there are more pages. 
We have block numerics and we have values between zero and 15. So clicking one of these will change what number value you're going to be using when you're setting any of these other block states. So if I set it to three, whenever I select one of these properties, three is what it's going to change to. So I chose the number three. So if I go over to candle now, you can see I can change it to be three candles. If I go to the composter, I can change it to be level three in the compost. For age, I can change the age of this nether wart. For bites, I can make it take three bites out of the cake. And for the repeater, I can change its delay. Now, something to note with the repeater, the repeater has multiple block states that we can manipulate. So I set it to a delay of three. Let's also make it powered and we can make it locked. So we can manipulate all of these block states without affecting any of the other ones. So now if I go to, okay, let's go back to zero and I choose that delay. We are able to manipulate that as well. Now the next page block specialty does some stuff that I couldn't really fit into one category. So for example, we have grass here, you may notice. Now what grass does is it allows us to use short grass to turn it into long grass because those are two different blocks. So if I were to add in short grass and then I go to the block specialty and go to grass, it's actually going to change it into the bottom of the long grass. And then if I wanted to, I could also change its path to be the top portion of it. And obviously if I go back to block specialty, hit grass again, it's gonna go back to short grass. And this is the same for short grass to tall grass, fern to large fern, and sea grass to tall sea grass. The next part is vines. Now this is for weeping vines, twisting vines, and glowberries. These two are two different blocks. We have weeping vines and we have weeping vines plant. Now, what we can do is we can add in the weeping vines, which is literally just this tip here, but we have no way of getting the plant itself normally. What block specialty allows us to do is toggle that so we can get this version of it as well. And obviously clicking it again, will send it right back to this version. And we also have stems, which is for pumpkin and melon stems, because these are two different blocks. We have the regular pumpkin stem and the attached pumpkin stem. So if I were to use pumpkin seeds, for example, it'll add in this little bit right here. So let's go ahead and set its age to seven. And that is the fully grown pumpkin stem without a pumpkin attached to it. But if I go ahead and go to block specialty and I hit stems, we're gonna get the attached version. In the block specialty page, we also have the ability to change dirt into path blocks by choosing path or farmland by choosing farmland. Now these normally we would not be able to access as items in our inventory to be able to set these blocks. So I added in these toggles so we would be able to actually use them as displays. Now farmland also has a moisture block state. So if we go ahead and set that, we could actually switch that out right here as well. We also have stuff for comparators to switch the mode, whether it's in subtract mode or compare mode. We have the ability to change the hopper direction between going sideways and going vertical. And we have the ability to change whether or not rails are straight or curved. Now this next set has multiple options for each state. And so these will be toggled through one at a time. So if I go to leaves, this is for bamboo, we can see that I am toggling through all the different variants for it. We have the bell right here. Now do keep in mind for the bell and a few other displays, it's not going to display the full model. That's because some of the model is actually considered an entity. So for example, we can't do banners, we can't do signs, we can't do the bell. We could do the, the attachment for the bell, but not the bell itself. And enchantment tables will not have their book. Lecterns will not have their book. That's just the way Minecraft has it set up. For drip leaf, we can change its tilt. For slabs, we can change whether it's a bottom slab 
top slab or double slab. Now, the double slab normally will look like the full block, but let's say, for example, we were using a smooth stone slab instead, we can actually see that we get that double effect right there, like we normally would, versus let's say just a regular smooth stone block, we don't get that line across. For pointed dripstone, we can change its thickness, so from tip to frestum, to middle, to base, to tip merge, and then back to tip. And for stairs, we can change its shape, just like so. Now, another thing that I've done is I've made it so that you can get this book by using sculptures. You could use it by getting sculptures V1, or you can get it by using sculptures V2. And this also means that if you already have this data pack installed, if you rerun the install command after you add this new version in, Anytime a player picks up or moves this book around in a slot, it will automatically update to the latest version. I've also made the book run a little bit more efficiently in certain cases and reduced a lot of the code necessary to actually find the display you're trying to interact with, as well as cut out a lot of the unnecessary code. This is because Minecraft has added in a few different features that made it a lot easier to run certain commands. So the book should be a lot faster now. So you can find this book on Planet Minecraft. Link will be in the description below. It is absolutely free and easy to set up. And once it's set up, oh baby, is it amazing. Hope you guys enjoy making your sculptures. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to get notified when I upload a video. If not following already, please consider following me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and supporting me on Patreon. All at Curtis is a dig. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one. Hmm. Maybe version four will allow us to put in entities.